All right, this is part two of this video that I started about a month ago. And um, sorry, I am not a reviewer or anything of that sort. So please do bear with me because I might just not be good at this. But I'm going to try my best to explain this radio and my personal experience with it. Um, as you know, I purchased it back in December and I've had the chance to install it in my truck finally. And I've been driving around with it for about three weeks or so. And there are lots of things that I like and lots of things that I don't like. And we will go over these things and hopefully I'll kind of get all of these into one. Um, in the end of this video, I'll have a, uh, uh, a continuation. I'm just gonna add a part to it where um, when I installed it initially, um, I was very, very, very unhappy with the sound quality and the level of the sound. And I had to purchase extra parts to uh, make it clearer and louder and I'll explain what I had to do um, but in the end of this video but um, I'll, I'll be patching a second part of, the, of that to this video that way you can see what I had to do and what levels of audio I had okay so um, I know I spoke about um, a few things and um, the the first thing that I wanted to know about this DAC was how was the stock launcher? Um, how was the Android experience? Is it there? Is it not? Um, what can we expect? And um, to start off with, I'm gonna say that I didn't like the launcher at all. And I can understand now why most people install different launchers. And, and in a few, I'm gonna go ahead and go start using the other launcher. But in the meantime, I'll go over this launcher. And it is a nice launcher. It's very responsive um, and it is um, kind of good but it, it lacks in the um, customization uh, department. For example, these are the widgets that I can use. And I've got the front first page when you click home is widgets. And then after that, it just shows your programs, which you can move around to you know whatever page you want, but they're kind of just programs. And, and unless you remove all of them off your screen or so many of them, then you could add a widget. But you kind of uh, don't have like a, an app drawer your apps are there and the first page or however many pages you want could be widgets. Now the reason I didn't like it so much is because you're kind of limited on the real estate on your screen and they limit you uh, quite a bit. So for example I'm going to try to add a widget in here and it doesn't give me the ability to add just an app. So for example I've got all this real estate here and I could possibly put some apps down there to fill it up but I'm forced to put a widget. So um, you see how it is here, I'm sorry, on the second screen, how these are apps, they're also taking a lot of real estate. So you can't really put just a, a square anywhere. Um, and the only way to add something, no matter what page you're on, is a widget. And to go to widgets, you're kind of very limited um, because the standard Android widget sizing doesn't work with the init. So I'm gonna go back to the main screen to show you how that affects you. So for example, I've got this all this real estate down here, which could be filled up with things that size. And let's say I wanted to add something in there. I'm forced to add a widget, first of all. And let's say I want to add, um, I don't know, uh, my email or something, right? If I go to put it in there, it's going to say there's no room on the screen. And most of everything's going to be that way. So luckily, for example, um, in this example, uh, Pandora is something that would fit in there. But it just doesn't look right. It kind of takes up everything and it just doesn't look right. So I, I hated the um, the launcher on this. Uh, then next comes the Android experience. And when I go to settings here, you'll notice that I do have Android and I can go to uh, system. And let's see if I have the, uh, where it would tell you. It is Android 9. It is a PX5. There's the build number, kernel, MCU, the whole nine yards. But there isn't like a developer option or anything that you could activate. Um, there's a few things that I didn't like and I'll start off with my biggest thing that I did not like about the Android experience on this was the inability to um, transfer something via Bluetooth. So for example, when I go to Bluetooth here and I click on it, um, the device name is Xtrons and it's connected to my phone, okay? And so here's my phone and I'm going to just swipe up and unlock it. 
And if I was to go to um, an item, for example, uh, I'll just go to gallery here, pull up a picture. And for example, I have a picture of a battery here and I want to share it. And if I want to share it via Bluetooth, I can't really find the unit here. You can't search it. You can't transfer something to that unit via Bluetooth, which is really uh, strange because you know they're connected to each other via Bluetooth. They're both Android. If I was trying to transfer something from my phone to my friend's phone that's uh, Bluetooth, be it an Android or not, I am able to. However, I'm not able to transfer something to this unit that way. So uh, as a matter of fact, I'm not able to transfer something via Wi-Fi to this unit this way either. So unless I want to take the SD card, which nowadays most phones don't have an SD card and or it's very much a pain in the behind to take it out and then stick it into the unit, then I won't be able to share something between them. And, and that was very, very uh, irritating almost. Um, the second thing is you'll notice that it can connect to two devices at once, which is really cool. Um, and that's a plus, not a minus. I'm just done with the minus with the with the system because the system seems to be working just fine, except for that one Kirk, uh, uh, problem that I have with it. So um, when I ordered this, I also ordered the uh, Torque, well, their Extron version of the uh, dongle, and it pairs just fine every time. It gives me real-time information, which I have a, a Ford pickup truck, so I set it up to where there's a few items that I wanted on there and it works flawlessly. It connects every time, it gives me everything. And, um, and and the other cool thing is I've got oversized tires and this does give me GPS speed versus regular speed, which is really nice. And you could add things to it, uh, pages and pages and pages of things. But I only uh, have added the main page and I like it this way and it's just pretty simple, pretty clean. Um, next about the Android system in it is for some reason, um, it isn't, it is not rooted. Let's just get that out of the uh, way. It's not rooted, and that's a good thing. I, I don't want my stereo to be rooted, but it is the security. The Google securities are un, they're not enabled on it. So you couldn't really find Netflix on the App Store. You couldn't find certain apps on there because it's not verified by Google. I had to go and download other apps and other other apps and other 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 apps to be able to get Netflix to work on this thing, which is pretty sad. It's like, why is it not? Why is the security not enabled on it? Or whatever the case may be. I know it's a Chinese cheap unit, but you know, I couldn't find certain apps on the market that I wanted. And so I had to go ahead and download them via something else and sideload them. Um, other than that, it is pretty decent um, other than the sound quality. So the system itself, the Android is pretty good. It's a, a true Android experience, but the launcher kind of limits it. So uh, that's why I'll show you here why I downloaded a different launcher and what launcher I downloaded. Um, but the, the, the launcher, like I said, the Bluetooth not connecting that well, uh, those are problems that, um, and, and again, when I say Bluetooth not connecting that well, Bluetooth connected perfectly and connects perfectly every time. Um, and so does Wi-Fi. By the way, I had a user um, comment on my last video saying that their Wi-Fi would not connect to this thing. And mine works flawlessly. I do have to say that I have a hotspot in my vehicle that is on at all times. So when I turn my deck on, there's already a Wi-Fi hotspot that is on. So maybe that is the difference. Uh, try to turn on your hotspot before you turn on the deck maybe. I don't know, but mine works flawlessly. Um, what else? Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, I kind of jump all over the place. I know, I'm, I'm not really good at this. Okay, so back to this. We're gonna go ahead and start the other launcher, which I chose to download, and it is because it just works better. Um, it looks better, it feels better, and it works better. I'm gonna go to settings, and I'm gonna go to um, apps, and I'm gonna say default apps, and home app, I'm gonna go to Car Web Guru, and that's what I chose instead. And as you can see, it looks a lot nicer, um, it gives you a lot more options, and it isn't perfect either, but it is. it does work very, very well. Um, I've got it set up to where I like it, and I'm not going to go through it. Uh, I'm just going to explain a few things on the edit itself at this point. Um, again, things that I didn't like were the uh, voltage output, um, that it doesn't have the Google security enable. Um, another thing was the touchscreen on it. The touchscreen works well, and actually fairly well, but it just it seems like it's a resistive, not a... a, a, a 
capacitive screen. So it, it, it feels like an older style of a screen and not, not that uh, like newer. And the brightness on it is actually very good, uh, but it could be a little brighter during the day, but that's about it. And then the launcher. Um, things that I really loved on it was the fitment. Um, it fit perfectly in this, in, in this deck, in the, in the truck. Uh, all I had to do is I had to purchase the Metra kit, which is available at any car stereo shop. It's a true double din, which means it has the side bolts and the whole nine yards just to work perfectly on there. And then you just mount it to your kit, mount it in your truck. And obviously if you buy the proper harness for your vehicle, it works flawlessly. Uh, oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I really love the fact that it still has a DVD player um, behind it. Um, it has two SD slots and I love that. Um, and now I'm like at a loss of what I wanted to say because I am not good at this again. <laughs> I think overall, I really like it. If I was to have to buy it again, I would totally do it. Um, it's it, it displays everything that you need to do. It works flawlessly. I connected the volume controls through my steering wheel, worked great. Um, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi worked great. The equalizer seems to be working with um, everything on there. Um, but the sound quality was just crap until I connected uh, extra devices to boost up the voltage out of the RCA jacks. It gave me like about a half a volt of, uh, of uh, output until I boosted it up. And, and that's just ridiculous. Um, it, it really shouldn't, shouldn't come down to that. Um, I think I've covered most things on there, uh, but if you've got any questions, leave them in the comment and I'll try to answer them. Again, I'm terrible at this. And this is kind of like my first or second, you know, thing I've ever done on a radio. And I hope it helps somebody. If you have questions, let me know. I do have the Car Web Guru display on right now. And I'm just trying to show what the voltage output is on the RCA jacks of this unit. Um, you'll see for yourself, but I'm definitely not impressed. Um, and it explains why my audio sounds like crap. Um, I'm going to go to the EQ and you'll see that it's on flat. Um, I've got the voltmeter hooked up to voltage AC uh, coming out of the RCA jacks. I've got it connected to just one jack. Nothing else is connected to anything so there's no um, resistance on them in any way. And so this should give me the max output of that um, RCA jack. And you'll notice here when I go home, I've got a CD in there right now that is tuned to one. Uh, kilohertz to test the highs which I have it connected to so I've got track one at one kilohertz track two at 50 hertz so I could test the subs later and so on but the one kilohertz should give me a pretty good idea at the voltage output level that I'm getting out of the uh, RCA jack let me try to tilt it down so there's as much glare um, my truck is a mess but I just wanted to do this now while I'm installing the amps or upgrading and adding things to them so I'm gonna take it back to the beginning of the track. Ugh, I don't think I could even do that. Okay, there we go. I've never played a CD in this device. So I'm gonna to go to track one, which is going to be my um, one kilohertz. And I'll go ahead and start at zero and you'll see where the levels change on the voltage. And this again, this should give me zero volts to zero. And as I increase, it's going to give me, to start giving me towards the top of the, I'll use my steering wheel controls so that way my hand is not on there. Um, so you'll notice at level 10, keep in mind this thing goes to level 30. I'm getting 0.064 of a volt. Level 20, level 20, you'll start noticing that it went to 0.2, so about a quarter of a volt. And then you'll notice after that it starts increasing quite dramatically. Um, well, not dramatically, but um, let me go and rewind again um, so that way we are on the same track. Because the track plays from, actually I could just play it on repeat. Here we go. So I'm gonna repeat that track. Uh, I think that's the repeat button, no? There we go, repeat one. So again, we're at a half a volt at level 24. And usually you don't have, you shouldn't have to go above freaking 75% of the volume on the deck. 
But even at that, I'm getting nothing to my amps. A half a volt is nothing. Um, and then at the last, you know, between 25 to 30, you'll see huge jumps. 26, 27, 28 is almost a volt. 29 is a volt. And 30 jumps to like 1.4 volts almost. And so that's a huge, huge, huge increase of just one between 29 and 30. So I'm guessing it distorts about 25 or 20, you know, 25, but I'm getting a half a volt to my amps, which is ridiculously low. Um, usually you want a minimum of two volts, um, but a half a volt is just crap.